this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use the vanishing point filter in Photoshop to place images, graphics, or text on any object in your image while maintaining the proper perspective. To show you the basics, I'm just gonna use this billboard. I'm gonna put this Homer image and the Simpsons logo onto the billboard. So the first thing we have to do is add a blank layer. So this box with a plus in it, just click that and add a blank layer. Then head up to filter and go into vanishing point. When Vanishing Point opens up, you're gonna notice that there's a bunch of tools over here that you can use. We're gonna focus on these top ones here for now, especially this Create Plane tool. And with that tool, all you're gonna do is click on each of the corners of your plane. So I'm gonna go here to this corner, this one, my third corner, and my fourth corner. I'm gonna click off on this one. So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna go Control Plus and zoom in and make sure your corners are all lined up as close as possible. Now, if you don't have four corners exactly perfect like I do, I'm gonna show you how to deal with that in the next example right after this. So you just move your corners to line up as close as possible. So this one is off a little bit to the right, I'll move it over, and this one's maybe off to the left a little bit. And by the way, if you hold down X, you can punch in and get a closer look as well. Now. You might have a situation where you're trying to move it into place and you might get yellow boxes like that or you might get red. Both of those mean that you're just off. Photoshop just doesn't like it. So just keep moving it into place until you get blue. And that means Photoshop agrees with your perspective. So then click OK. And well, at this point, it looks like nothing happened. If we go back into filter and vanishing point, you can see that Photoshop has kept that perspective plane for us to use at any point. So now all we're going to do is go over to the image or graphic that we're going to place in there and you're just going to go select all and then edit copy or control C then go back over here make sure you're on this blank layer one go back into filter and vanishing point and then just go control V to paste it in and then all you have to do is click and drag it over top of that plane that we made and it will twist and turn and match with this perspective. Yours, if it's too big or too small, all you have to do is go Control T and then hold Shift and go to the corner to resize and scale it up. If yours is too big and you can't see a corner, then just drag it over like this and hold Shift and shrink it down a bit so that you can see the whole thing to be able to stretch it out and fill your canvas properly, okay? So for me, that looks pretty good. It's filling up my canvas. When you got that, just click OK. And then just do the same thing if you wanna add something else. So I have this graphic. I'm gonna go select all, edit, copy, head back over here. I'm gonna add a new blank layer, go into filter, vanishing point, go Control V to paste that one in, and then same thing. Just drag it over and Control T Hold shift to scale it down and place it where you want and click OK and you're good to go. The only other thing I would do with this is I would go over to this one, double click over here to bring up your layer style and I'll just shift this over. I like to use this underlying layer one, hold alt and you can separate these sliders and for this one I just want to bring some of that like billboard texture back in on each side. So this will be the highlights on this side. This was kind of the shadows. Just kind of bring some of that texture back in to make it kind of blend a little bit better and click OK. All right, so that's the basics. Now let's look at another example here where we don't have perfect corners to line ourselves up. So we'll do the same thing. Add a blank layer, go up to filter, vanishing point. And this time all we're gonna do is line up with the things that we know for sure first. Okay, so right here, I know that this spot is a good one. I know that right there is gonna be a good one. And then over here, I'm just gonna kinda line up like this for now. I don't really care. I'm just gonna put a dot there and I'm gonna line it up with this bottom line and go to the edge of that artwork right here. So we know that this is red. So Photoshop doesn't like that. And we know that the one that's off is this one. So now all we have to do is click on that corner and drag it up. It says that this is blue, but we know that it's gonna line up with this, the like piping and the roof right here. So keep maneuvering it until you got something that looks good and is blue, lines up pretty nice over here, lines up good there, here and here. And then just like we did last time, control plus zoom yourself in and just make sure your, your points are where they're supposed to be. And then the only other thing we have to do for this one 
is now we can see our plane doesn't fill up everything that we want. So in this case, the wall is empty here. You have to go to this right here, just click and drag it out. So it fills up everything you need to fill up. So let's say on this side, if I drag this down, you can see that the perspective just stays as I dragged it. So if, let's say you had you ended right here. Let's say you had a line like right here in your image, and that was the best way to line up your corners. Then just take the edge and stretch it out to where you want it to end. So for me, it's right, you know, there where that wall meets the other wall. When you're good, then just click OK, and then we're gonna go and get the image. This time I have wallpaper that I'm gonna put on there. So I'm gonna select all, edit, copy go back over here, make sure I'm on my blank layer, go back into filter, vanishing point, then go control V to paste it in. And then just like last time, you're gonna click and try and drag it in. Now, it might fight you. So you can see it kind of fought me there for a second. If that's the case, then just go control T and resize before you put it into your perspective plane here. So in this case, I didn't have to, but sometimes you have to scale it down first and then drag it in. So now I'm just gonna stretch this out to fill out everything that I have here. So the wallpaper looks good, so something like that. And click OK. And then now you can see that that looks good, except we have this person that was in the way. So if you have something like that, then all you have to do is go Control J, duplicate your layer. And I would suggest just going over to the Magic Wand tool or Quick Selection tool here and using Select Subject. I'm gonna hide this for now and go Select Subject. So hopefully that selects this guy right there, good. I'm gonna go into Select and Mask really quick, maybe just expand my radius a bit. I'm gonna feather it a bit because this guy is blurry and just shift my edge back a bit maybe. And then go to Selection, make it a layer mask and click OK. Now if I drag this above that wallpaper, we can see that he's now in front of the wallpaper. But again, just like last time with this one, I want that texture or some stuff to come through. So there's the lights here, so there should be like some glow, like some highlights up here and some different things. So for this one, what's cool is if I double click again and just use the exact same sliders here, if I hold Alt and then slide this along, we can actually, if we drag this along, we can actually bring those paintings that were, or the artwork that was behind, we can actually bring them all the way through the wallpaper by just kind of maneuvering these, these sliders. And then up here, with the highlight one here, I can bring some of that, like the light that was shining up there on the wall, you can bring some of that through too, and then just click OK. But I would also suggest playing around with your blend modes as well. So make sure you're clicked on the wallpaper layer, and then just click around in here and pick something that you think looks good. So none of these down here look good, but up here, like darker color, that looks pretty cool to me. Linear burn, that looks really good. So if we look at that's after, and then if we undo it, that was before. So I think blend modes can add a lot of character to your image as well for like a wallpaper thing like this. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to make a separate plane over here on this wall, and we're gonna add some text over here. So let's start by making the text. So I'm just gonna type in wall, very creative. And then we're just gonna do the same thing we did before. Let's add a blank layer and go up to filter and vanishing point. And then make sure to select on this create plane tool and we're gonna make a new plane over here. So just do the exact same thing. Click there, I'm gonna click in this corner, over here and over here, and then maneuver your, you know, your dots, your corners to make sure it lines up all nice and Photoshop likes it, and then you're good to go. Now, if you do make a plane that you don't like, so let's say I made a, another one over here and I'm like, ah, I don't like that one. All you have to do is click away to somewhere blank click back on it and then just backspace or delete to get rid of it. But we don't wanna get rid of this one, that's the one we're keeping, so let's click OK. And then now, all we have to do is on our wall layer here, make sure you're clicked on the text layer, hold Control and then click on the T over here. That'll make a selection of the letters, then just go Edit, Copy, then go Control D to deselect, and then click the eyeball to hide it, and then click back on your blank layer go up to filter, vanishing point, and do the same thing we did before, control V to paste it in. And then we're just gonna take that text and drag it onto this wall this time. And you can see that it shifted. I'm just gonna put it like that and click okay. 
And then obviously, just like anything else, you can double click to the right of your layer to bring up your layer style menu and just play around with different effects in here to make your text the way that you want it. Now, the one thing to take note of here is that when you copy your text, it actually turns it into a rasterized copy of that text. So make sure you have your font set in advance and I would use a large size. So this one right here, I use 300. And for this little one right here, I use 72. And if we zoom in to see the difference, when I pasted each of these onto the wall plane here, this one had somewhat jaggedy edges here, but this one had just terrible edges. So basically before you copy your text, just make sure that you have the word that you want, the font that you want, and that it's a large size. But just so you know, you can also mess with the perspective manually if you want by just going to your text layer, right clicking to the side here, and converting it to a smart object. Then if you go Control T and hold Control, you can maneuver these corners to change the perspective manually if you want. But if you get it in line and you move it, then you just have to hold Control and reshift your, your corners to change the perspective once again. The bonus of doing it this way is that you can still edit your text. So if I double click on the text layer, it'll bring me into this PSB one, which is the smart object. And I can still double click in here and change my text. If it's bigger than the box, just extend this out, go to your crop tool over here and extend the canvas. And then you'll have your new word. You can change the font size, everything in there and just click check. And then now when we exit out and save, it'll actually change the text over here as well. And if you're gonna do it this way, I would also suggest adding a blank layer underneath, going up to filter and vanishing point, and then just going up here and going render grids to Photoshop and click okay. And then you're gonna get the grids that show up on their own layer. So then you can go back onto your text, go control T and hold control. And then you can use the guidelines to make sure that you have a better perspective in line with what it should be. And then you can just click the eyeball and get rid of the grids. All right, for my last example, I'm gonna show you how to put text on this one right here and extend planes to another plane. So we'll do the exact same thing to start, add a blank layer, go up to filter, go down to vanishing point. And for this one, I'm just gonna select this section right here to kind of mimic another one of those ones where if you don't have like the full option to select everything then you try and find one section and then once you're set you just drag out on one of these edges like I showed you on the other one and hopefully this matches up perfectly right there with this corner of the building not quite so I'm gonna shift this over just a bit and then I'm gonna drag this side out hopefully this one lines up so that's a little bit better on that end Okay, there you go. And then if you have another plane like this over here, you have another side of the wall, you just hold control and then drag out a new plane. So this plane is being dragged out. If you have your angle and everything set properly, then this could, a lot of the times it does, it'll line up perfectly with this other edge and here just as you're dragging it out. In my case, it didn't line up. So I could drag this corner down and try and match it up or you can try and mess with your angle up here to make sure that it's on the same the proper angle to match up properly to show you a quick example of this i'm going to click on this plane again over here and then just drag it out until it reaches the ground so that i can hold control and tear off a new plane that can go across the ground at a 90 degree angle here to cover up the pool and I could also hold control, click here, and drag a new plane up here into nowhere if I want as well. Okay, so again, once you have yours set, just click OK. Next, we're gonna add our text. So we have two words. One's gonna go on this side and one's gonna go on this side. I'm gonna hide point for now. And on this, I'm just gonna hold control and click on the T part right here. That'll select it. Then I'm gonna go edit, copy, control D to deselect, and then hide it. And then we just gotta add a blank layer. So I'm gonna add this blank layer, go up to filter, vanishing point, control V to paste it, and then just drag it in. Now, if it fights you like I was telling you about, remember, just go control T, get to the corner, scale it down, and then drag it in. Now, you'll notice that because we attach this plane with this plane, 
we can move the text through both planes and the perspective will change properly as we do that. So you just get it into place, stretch it out, and then scale it up and position it to the spot that you want and then click OK. And then I'm just gonna repeat the same process for the other text as well. Oh, and if you accidentally rotate your graphic or image or text, then just go Control Z to put it back. All right, so for the final touches on this text one, it really just depends on what my purpose would be. So if I was like this side, I'm gonna treat like it's supposed to be writing on the side of the building. So if that was the case, I would just do what I did with the other ones, just double click to the right of my layer right here, bring up the layer style menu, and I would use these sliders to start. So again, hold Alt, I would just slide this one over, maybe slide this a bit. You know, try and get some of the texture to see to pop through like that. And then try the same thing here to have some of the like highlights kind of pop through as well. So it matches the building. And then you can change the color overlay here to change your color. So if you want it to be like white like that and have these like, you know, like the, the rivets here pop through. So I think that is the easiest way to do it. So it makes it look like it's right on the building. But if you want to make it kind of hovering out or popping out, or maybe it's like a, a picture, something that's hanging on the building, then you just do the same thing, double click and go in here. But instead of blending it this time, I would say add a drop shadow. And you got to just play around with the angle. So I think an angle like this way would look good on this one. Obviously change the color to something that looks better. Play around with how much, you know, or little blur, like mess around with these to whatever you you know, think makes sense for yours. And you can do the same thing. You can change your color overlay to something different. I chose to bevel and boss as well. And I played around with some of these things to make it kind of pop out a little bit more. So it's like really kind of floating on the edge of the building instead. All right, so that's how you use Vanishing Point to put images, graphics, and text on any object in your photo while maintaining the proper perspective. If you got something out of this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.